Oh, Cash had a big old breakfast. Now it's 11. 32. Oh, I moved the ghetto theater around so I can play some sports out there on the video machine. But, just in case I don't get that accomplished, hey, I'm not going to be killing myself on it. So listen, I have a question for you. But first, I don't know if my eyes are closed. But first, but first, man, I gotta make sure you understand. No, but first, I have to make sure you understand the premise of this. You are a 16-year-old African-American kid on your way to school. You encounter an older white person that you know. This older white guy then pulls a knife out on you and threatens to kill you. We was boys. You was my nigga. And now... He wants to stab you. Takes your backpack, makes you get off the bus, because this is in public. It's happening now. You get off the bus, you argue and talk, he gives you the backpack. Then he says, I'm going to come to your house and fucking kill your grandmother, you and all your fucking brothers, if you don't tell me who beat up my little brother. I was shocked. This shit happened to you, little man? My little friend, my little only man. He's like, yeah, dude, threatened to kill my whole family. What happened? Remember, I had a house guest just recently. My house guest just moved out. About nine months ago, my house guest was coming back from the store. And he was approached by a white dude. The white dude says, hey, man, you know this black family? is a black family of young black guys around here. They attacked my brother, man. Where do you know where they live at? My friend's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. He's a white guy. He was on his way to a black house. Where there's black people living it. I don't know this motherfucker, he said. But they were actually standing in front of the guy's house when the guy asked him the question about the little black guy's family or what have you, the black family around the corner. Now, fast forward it. So this kid tells me the story about the you know white guy, you know, getting him on the bus, jacking him up and all that shit. And I told him, call the fucking police. And my two buddies are white guys are like looking at me like call the police. I'm like, yeah. Motherfuckers threatening your grandmother's life. And if a bunch of young black dudes hanging out in front of grandma's house whoop some dude's ass one night, and I'll tell you what the thing is about that, you know, what transpired, you know, from what I heard. And This is my whole thing. When you have house guests over and they drinking in front of your house and somebody rides by on a bike and says something, drunk people don't listen. Now let me fast, but let me rewind back to another flashback. We were camping. Me, you know, it was work thing. Everybody from work was camping and one of our coworkers was drunk. And we're walking through this campsite and there's like 15, 20 motorcycles, and this big old group of people by this camper. And they're like, your buddy's had a good time. And dude was fucked up. We was with he hit, had a good time. It was drunk. He was, what the fuck you other? And he want to fight all these bikers. I'm like, there you go. Here, right there. They take him. You ain't finna get my head bashed in because you drunk and don't know how to control yourself. Drunk people say dumb shit. Now, let me. Go back to this point, this guy riding his bicycle. Apparently, these black dudes was out in front of the house drinking. Some Mexican dude drove by and said something in Spanish to these black guys who apparently don't know Spanish. And then he kept going. Of 
these black guys drunk or whatever. They don't fucking live in that house. They don't let air. What the fuck? Hey. So this white kid comes by on a bicycle. And they're like, hey. He thought it was the other guy. This is what I heard. So the white kid pulls up. And they're like, hey, dude, you gang bang or what? Oh, man, I'm just a vato. Black dude thought that was a whatever, a, another statement or what have you, from the same guy and stole on dude, crumbling him off the bicycle, thus giving him ass whooping for another three, four minutes or less. Whatever. Kid gets up. Now he's pissed off talking shit. Motherfuckers out. Oh, fuck you, motherfuckers out. Oh. And then he goes and tells his meth user uncle. Now, this here's where it gets real, real twist. The meth tweaker uncle who threatened the little black kid on the bus used to live at grandma's house when he had no place to live. Same white dude lived on these black people's couch when he had no place to live, threatens to come back and blow grandma's head off and kill everybody up in the house if they don't tell who jumped on his little brother. I'm like, call the fucking police. First of all, no 73-year-old black woman knocked the hell out this dude and slapped his ass off a bicycle. And I'm not going to defend anything those black dudes did. That's fucking ridiculous. If you don't understand what somebody's saying to you, don't fucking reply. If somebody riding by on a bicycle and say something, I see a bunch of black dudes outside drinking all, hey, y'all having a good time? What the fuck that motherfucker say? Because they're drunk. Drunk people don't think. But I was walking my dog the other day. Another flashback. And, you know, a group of white guys like, what's up, bro? I'm like, what's up? Because they were loud. And then all of a sudden, a black guy hit the corner. So I was like, what's up, bro? Because they didn't see me from, from the angle I was coming from. What's up? Kept going. Could have stopped to talk to him. But no. Why? Somebody said hi. I could have took it wrong. Like, the fuck I heard y'all yelling earlier? Fuck you. I got your bro here, motherfucker. What you fuck your bro? Why? What's the purpose of me going over and saying something and I really didn't understand what the people say? Fast forward to the white kid. You see a bunch of drunk people or people having a good time. If they comment to you, you can wave your hand and keep going. I wasn't going to say something and get embroiled in, in a conversation with these people and give them an opportunity for their alcohol or something to kick in for them to say, oh, man, motherfucker, you trying to talk to us now? I don't want to do that. So if you riding your bicycle and you a black person, a white person, a Mexican, or whatever the hell you are, and you're in a strange neighborhood or in a neighborhood you know, and you see a bunch of people drinking outside and they comment on you, hey, what's up, man? Keep the fuck going. And then if somebody screaming at you, like, hey, come back, man, you gang bang, you gang bang, and you gonna turn around and, no, man, there's things you don't do. I don't go to certain neighborhoods. Let's have another flashback here. I remember when I was in high school and I was going out with this one girl and she was so cute and fine. Here's the kicker. She was already pregnant. Wasn't my baby. She's just somebody I met who was pregnant and shit. She was cute and fine. We talked and shit, you know. So I went to go see her one time in Oakland. I'm not from Oakland. I was from Richmond. You know how they get out. Richmond and Oakland ain't like... Kissing cousins of best friends. San Francisco and Richmond. Oakland and San Francisco. San Francisco and Oakland. Oakland and Richmond. Richmond and San Pablo. Ba 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 do Daily City. Wa wa woo woo boom bam. Sacramento. Whatever. You don't know. You'll never know. I can't tell you all that. So I go to this girl's house. She said, Well, come on by. And I'm like, It's getting kind of late. Well, I catch the bus down there. I'll come down there. I'll see you around, you know. 30 I'll leave around midnight gone home sit with a girl watch a movie I was cool like that chill like that smoke the sip like that breeze like that so I go to kick it and I walk down the street and I'm like nice street got my watch and shit 
Cat, cat. I heard the shotgun. Cat, cat. Shotgun. Man, what you doing around here, man? Hey, man, I was looking for this short girl, man. She's pregnant or whatever. Oh, man, she live over there, man. We'll walk you over there. Three more dudes came out of all of them had shotguns. They walked me to the girl house. When you leave, man, click the light a couple times, man. We'll come over and we'll walk you on back to the bus stop. Wow. That's off the hook. That could have blew my head off. What you doing around here? I'm going over to talk to this pregnant, pregnant girl. That's my girlfriend. Pow! Anything could happen. Back to this white guy. Because I had another flashback. I was going to take y'all when I was in Mexico. I'll tell y'all about that flashback at the end of this video. So listen. This white kid gets beat up. It happened to get beat up by a bunch of black guys at the house where his uncle used to live at. What are the odds of that shit? So then, you know, me being the detective I is, I asked a couple more questions of a few more people and found out a few more interesting facts. And these facts are this. I told a kid, you little idiot kid, call the police. You or your brothers didn't have nothing to do with it. Apparently, the cousin came over and the dude that gave the cousin a ride up to grandma's house you know, just like three or four dudes, you know, they came out here and had their smoke on because the smoke is far superior here. I tell you, it is. You believe me. And, you know, these guys was drunk. And when you got drunk people up here, no women to talk to, because, come on, you're going to set up some fools, mess up your game. He got his ride. They kicked it. They was kicking. The dude was in the house. In the house. They decided, and he's like, you know, I'm not gonna, don't smoke in my house, you know. So they he was outside smoking weed. They wasn't smoking at grandma's house, showing the respect. They smoking weed on the front porch or what have you. And the Mexican guy did go by and say something, but they don't speak Spanish. The Mexican guy's probably like, that shit smells good. What the fuck? When you out of town and you go to some other town, and ain't no real opposition, ain't nobody trying to front on you, ain't nothing happening, ain't nobody hanging out, ain't nobody doing nothing, then what do you expect to say? You got a bunch of hood street motherfuckers come way out here, and they're not understanding. They're not understanding why there's no one hanging on the corners, why there's a liquor store down the street and nobody in front of it. They don't understand the fact that the street lights are on and there's nobody walking around doing nothing. People in their house minding their own business. And when you see somebody walk by, you say, hey, what's up? And they keep on going. Or somebody see you, how you doing? There's some people from out of town. Other people come to your house and not give a damn about your neighbors and always fuck it up. And I told this kid, call the police. The last thing this guy wants, some meth head, meth motherfucker wants to do, is come fuck up the place where these people helped him. He don't want that. He just want to know who jumped on his brother. But to threaten somebody's grandmother and shit or whatever. And yeah, them dudes was looking for trouble because there's nothing to do. They was bored. First person fuck with them, they was going to fuck with them. And that mentality is chicken shit. It's chicken shit. It's a chicken shit pack mentality. You go start some shit in front of somebody else's house. You get in your car and you go home. So when the drama comes back, these people who have to live here are toe up, shot to the wayside. And could you imagine if my friend would say, hey, I'm going to a black motherfucker's house. What's the deal? What's the problem? My only assumption is that this white dude, meth motherfucker, Saw my buddy with the gold tee, skinhead, you know, burns going on, you know, black jacket, pack of beer, muscled out, walking to the house. He's like, oh, this motherfucker finna help me crack some niggas' heads. And it was fucking twisted. If you look at both sides of the situation, I pointed it out. This motherfucker slept on those motherfuckers' couch and shit. And now he want to go back and say he's going to kill the person. 
the same fucking people that fed him. That's some chicken shit ass bullshit fucking mentality right there. If you got it like that, ma'am, somebody attacked my brother out here. Can you help me find out who did it? And we can call the police on these people. Not. I'm going to go in there and blast these black motherfuckers and shit. I'll kill all you niggas up in here. You don't do that. The whole fucking shit was cock twisted. And I told that boy, I'm like, call the police. After talking about this situation with this young dude for like two hours yesterday, me and two white dudes, the two white dudes looked at me and they were like, call the police. And the black dude he even said, I just can't call the police. I'm like, well, you can't call the police. And if you come up there and blow your fucking grandmother's head off, you can't say that you told them so. You're not a snitch when somebody threatens your grandma and threatens to kill you when you had nothing to do with it. Not you nor your brother was in town when the incident went down. Why would you allow somebody to pull a knife on you in public, take your shit from you, talk shit to you for 20 or 30 minutes, give you your shit back, and tell you I'm going to fucking blow your motherfucking grandmama's head off and kill all y'all black motherfuckers in there. Were they all kind of black motherfuckers when he was sleeping on their couch? Was he all kind of black motherfuckers when the old black woman said, come get you a fucking bowl of something to eat and get your ass up out the rain, young man? But now they got to go. Those niggers got to go. And I said to myself, them black ass motherfuckers, idiots, start some shit at somebody else's house and go home. White people do the same shit too. Because when white people do it, it's like, you know, they be on vacation and, you know, the friend of a friend, you know, there and stole my, white people. White people just come over to my house. They used to steal shit. They, they pick up shit and steal shit. You had to fucking move shit. And then it's like, you know, I said to myself, maybe it's not the white people. Maybe it's the quality of fucking white people. Maybe you can't have piece of shit black people around you either. But you must always remember, regardless of what color you are, or who you are, or what nationality you are, your friend is your friend. Your friend is not your neighbor's friend. Your friend is not your mama's friend, your cousin's friend, or your grandmother's friend. Your friend don't have to show anyone else other than you respect. And people don't think that when they take their friends over other people's houses. If I take Jimmy to your house and I know Jimmy don't like Mexicans and you're Hispanic, why would I do that? Why would I take Bill over your house and I know Bill don't like black people and I'm the only black person Bill like? If you're not my son, my wife, or blood relative, Bill ain't going to like it. What if I, I'm not just going to take that? Oh, this is, this is my cousin. I'm not going to co-sign for somebody like that. You do not take people who are prone to fuck up to somebody else's house and expect them to carry on as if they would at their own home. And that's what I told them. I'm like, these motherfuckers from out of town need to call your cousin who brought them up here and tell him these people are coming and threaten the house. Remember that when you bring somebody back to grandma's. And it's like, that's why I had to do that. Should have did this one this morning and not did the other one. But that's what I, I feel. I sad. And the, mor the moral of the story and the bottom line on this video is, can you call the police for somebody else's drama? Would you call the police to protect yourself? If somebody, if I went to your house and I walked to the store and on the way back from the store, your neighbor's like, hey, who are you? Well, who the fuck are you? And I walk right in your yard and he's like, oh, some strange guys. He's like, how do you know? I'm not a strange guy. My attitude is like, um, hey, I'm hey, I'm just going to my friend's house, man. But when you have an attitude, when somebody does something negative, you're like, hey, hey, what are you doing over there? Look back and not say nothing, knock on the door, take care of your bed. And so it's like, just send an old friend, let it go. Sometimes people are nosy.
And sometimes people just want to say, hey, you guys look like you're having a good time. You don't know what other people are thinking. And when you go to somebody else's house and you don't know the people around the neighborhood, don't assume they're like the people in your neighborhood. Do not go to somebody else's house with the expectations of picking up something off a fucking table either. People do that shit. You can't. I told this one dude, don't bring your friend to my house. I had a friend and I love this man. Like I call him uncle. I call this grown ass motherfucker uncle. He's a Hispanic dude. I was like, call him uncle. This dude is like my uncle. He came over here after he got out of prison, right? And his friend was. Hey, you work on a lot of computer stuff. Can I borrow a plug to charge my phone? Can you teach me how to use my phone? I got a new phone. I'm just like, you know, the guy was nervous. They ain't been drinking. When people drink and they come visit you, you know, it's like he brought his buddy over here twice. So don't bring him over here. Dude is too jumpy. And it's like, you know, I know I'm being disrespectful. Because this guy is just a jittery person. It's like, whenever somebody comes to your house and you feel as if you got to watch them, that's an uneasy feeling. You don't want that person at your house. This dude is picking up shit, asking me questions about shit. Can I show him how to use my phone? Can I borrow a phone plug to charge my phone? You just met me three minutes ago, man. Can I get your number so I can call back? On my new phone? I haven't seen my good friend since I asked him not to bring his, actually, I think it was his son-in-law. Don't bring your son-in-law over here. I haven't seen my good friend. This guy used to work for me. He used to run interference for me. This was one of my, this was one of my go-to guys. This was number six on my team. This motherfucker was a bad motherfucker. He worked my, my Hispanic division. If I needed somebody to say some shit in Spanish to get somebody motivated. Put them in their place, man. Light this match. That was the man. That was the man. Missing. Good friend. But he can't come over with his friends because his friends don't show me the respect they show him. Sit down. Stop picking up shit. Legs shaking. Thought a dog's tail was hitting the ground. A table leg or something. Just do leg shaking. Oh, no. I can't do that. Make me nervous. And when you bring people around people, your friend on the left don't know your friend on the right from shit. He don't own him. He don't, he don't, own, he don't owe him anything. And he don't know him. So if you got somebody who respects you, that don't mean they're going to respect where you take them. This is the old cliche. You don't put your feet on your mama's coffee table. Don't put it on mine. The Eddie Haskell situation. Oh, hi, Mrs. Cleaver. I'm sure she leave the room. Oh, she's got a nice ass. Oh, your mom's hot. Oh, that would be so funny if Eddie would have did that. Would you call the police? I want you to get your speech recognition going. If you can't put on a video and give me your honest opinion, about other people's bullshit. When people bring bullshit to other people's houses. I need the truth. Put it down there on the bottom of the screen. Comment. Let it be known. Um, you know. Use your speech recognition. Try to give them a paragraph. I appreciate that. And the name of this video. Is can you call the police. Thank you.